Okay, so let's get right into it. The first two P's of production, the two P's of production, punctuality and preparedness. So I want to go ahead and, like I said, congratulate you guys for not only joining the class, but taking your success serious. Uh, the two P's of production, like I said, punctuality and preparedness, being on time, but most importantly, being ready. I tell you, people will look at those two things like, oh, it's a common word, LeVar. I hear punctuality all the time. I hear preparedness all the time. It doesn't matter what the goal you're going after, no matter what your success, being on time. I don't care if it's being on time to the gym. I don't care if it's being on time for work. I don't care if it's being on time for a presentation. Punctuality matters. Plus, when you get there, are you ready? Many people, and I'm quite sure you had these conversations with friends and family, have missed their goal. You want to know why? Because they were day late, and you know the other one, a dollar short. Or they were not prepared. So speaking of preparedness, I hope all of you have your pad and your pen prepared for uh, this afternoon's call. So definitely take notes, and please share any uh, suggestions or questions that you have during the presentation. Feel free to put them in the chat box, and we'll have a great time this afternoon. All right? Let's keep moving here. Okay, so the objectives for our first session, for session one, uh, foundations for success. We're going to talk about what are those base foundations for any type of success anyone is going after. Uh, two, the intro to a SMART goal. I know many of you have heard this maybe in the business world or outside of, but the introduction to SMART goals and how that will apply to overall success. Introduction to the doer AOS. What that is, and you all know the platform that I have of, of being a doer, uh, the, the AOS is your, your, uh, your actions of success, your actions of success. I know many times you've seen in some of the books and you've read you know, the laws of success. Well, in the doer model, we're going to take it a little step further and talk about the actions of success. What are the things that you must do in order to be successful? Not necessarily always abide by, such as a law. So we're going to talk about what actions we need to take. All right. We're going to talk a little bit about creating the doer mindset. And most importantly, guys, we're going to have fun. This is going to be a good time today. Hope you guys learn a lot. And like I said, please chime in uh, through the chat line if you have any suggestions or comments uh, throughout the presentation. Why are you here? Some of you may be here for structure for achieving your goals. You want a little more structure on that. You want more out of your life. You want to start and grow, grow your business, you know. Find out more about this whole success coaching thing anyway. And then some of you are here because why? I know it's absolutely free. I feel you. Listen, if I can get some personal development for free, I'm right there with you. I, I have put on all the social media sites plenty before, and I, use, I call it a doerism. Anytime you see opportunities to get information that can advance you towards your success, go ahead and take advantage of it. You never know what you will pick up and what you will learn that will take you to the next step. All right, guys, so let's move on here. All right, so I'm going to let this sit here for a second. I know you all have seen this. If, you've, if you follow anything that, that I do, you see the word doer all the time. You hear the word doer all the time. So we see the O in the word doer, and it says success is a choice. Doer, success is a choice. And the tagline is if you are willing to do what it takes. If you are willing to do what it takes. I just want you guys to look at that. Look at that logo for just a second. Let that sink in. But I want the reality of this of the comment, the reality of the tagline to actually make sense to you. Doer, success is a choice if you are willing to do what it takes. If you are willing to make the necessary sacrifices. If you are willing to get up early. If you are willing to stay up late. If you are willing to go through the fears and the possible loss of money and the possible up and down roller coasters of trying to lose weight, whatever your success is, whatever your goals are, are you willing to go through the fire, go in the deep end, as I say, to actually come out successful? OK. Now, when we look at success, guys, when we look at success, you can't really get your momentum going with success unless you understand the foundations of success. 
Like, what are those pillars and what are those platforms that keep you grounded to become successful? So there's three of them that I have here within the doer model. Uh, Understanding your why. I know we've all heard that. We're going to dig into it a little deeper on these next few slides. But what is your why? Understanding not only, you know, what, what your goal is and what the success is that you want to achieve, but why are you doing it? The second pillar, the, what is your consistency level? There is that is a non-negotiable gang, non-negotiable when it comes to the consistency of trying to achieve your dreams and goals. I always say consistency is the dividing line between the talkers and the doers. How consistent are you at trying to achieve whatever you set out to get? And the last but not least is belief in self. Not just something to be said, not just something to brush over. Belief in self ultimately is what's going to keep you grounded and keep you focused to achieve your dreams and your goals. But believe me, I think many of you know, many of you are on here for a lot of different uh, goals and dreams, a lot of different success plans that you may have. But you all know that there's a lot of times in the crunch time you are by yourself when it comes time to go after these dreams and their goals. There's not going to be a cheering section. There's not going to be a lot of fans around. When those middle of the nights when you're up grinding, if you're in school right now and you're trying to get a master's or a PhD, going back to school for undergrad, whatever the case may be, you know that there's those moments where you got to have those conversations with yourself, by yourself to pull through and make it happen. OK. So what is your why? Well, it's simple, right? What is your why? What is what is the reason or what is the driving force behind you making all those sacrifices? What is it really? See, this is twofold. People will say, so what's your goal? And I'll hear it all the time. Write your goal down. And believe me, I'm a big fan of writing your goal down. Actually, I think if you're not writing the goal down, you, you're honestly you're honestly kind of kind of wanting it and you're not seriously truly invested in achieving your dreams and your goals. Writing it down is step number one. But in addition to writing down that goal, write down the why. A lot of people don't write down what's the driving force behind why I want to accomplish what I want to accomplish. Is it financial freedom? Maybe so. Is it leaving a legacy of money for your children? Maybe so. Is it just to get a better situation in your life, get out of debt, whatever the case may be? It, for me, it's to use, use the, the gifts and talents that I have to inspire the world. It's a motivating force to, for me. I don't want that gift to be taken away. I want to leave a better world for my children, so I do and provide the gift that I was given to the world. So what, what is your why? What, what pushes you? And I know this may be funny to some people, but, but hey, I, I told my mom I was going to build her house. And is it a driving force for me? Absolutely. Because I'm that same little boy at nine and 10 years old. I looked his mom in the eye and said, Mom, I'm, I'm going to buy you a home one day. So whatever it is in your in your world, in your eyes, in those in those late hours, in those early mornings, in those times of frustration. And I'm not sure if this is going to happen. I'm not sure if it's going to work. You have to have that driving force to push you, nudge you on the shoulder, tap you in the head, get going. One more. Put put the cake and cookies down. You can make this diet. You can do it. Go ahead and take the risk on the investment for the business. There's so many things that come to those crunch times and those crossroads when it comes to achieving your dreams and your goals. But you look at that why. Look at that why. And remember, that is the driving force behind you getting to where you want to go. So, guys. Obviously, within any coaching session, we got to have we got to have a little a little push, got to have a little work. You know, if, if if I would it wouldn't be necessary for me to be on the phone with you guys if you could all do all 15 reps by yourself. Let's take it to a gym level. Right. I said we need to get 15 reps and get all 15 by yourself. You know, what do you really need me for? Right. So I'm going to be here to kind of help you try to get maybe 17 to 20 reps a day. Going to push you a little bit and, and challenge your thought process around your dreams and your goals um, throughout throughout the presentation this afternoon. So if we look at the bottom of this slide. It says go do. So your go do is basically like a homework or kind of a self check. And the go do for this slide is write down or take a picture of your why. Place it in a location where you can see it every single day, every day. 
Now, we've all got some type of smartphone, some type of phone. We can uh, have a picture. We can put quotes on there. We can we can. There's, there's so many ways I, I have. I've used to put mine on my bathroom mirror. I have put it inside of books. I've had it in my car. But my my dreams and my goals and my why are always present around me. I always have a constant reminder. So that is your first go do of today's class. Make sure that you are taking a picture or writing down your why and make sure it's in a location that you can see it every single day. Consistency level. Now, guys, I'm going to tell you, th this is probably the most important pillar when we think about the foundations of success. What is your consistency level? We all know a lot of talkers. I mean, let's be honest. Some of us even on this line right now, we've we've been talkers. But to get into that next level of becoming a doer, your consistency level has to be a passion driven, actionable activity. You have to want to do this no matter how hard, no matter how tough, no matter how frustrating, no matter if you can't see the end game where you are right now, you have to stay consistent. I'm telling you, once you get over that hump, no matter what the goal, no matter what the dream, no matter what the success, everybody has a curve to get over in order to achieve what they're trying to achieve. So the go do when we look at this consistency level is I want you to write down. Right next to your why, if you got your pen and pad with you right now, I hope you have your goal written down, you got your why written down, or the picture of the why that you want. The right beside that, right below that, I need you to put how much time per day do you currently contribute to your success? And I want you to be honest with yourself. How much time per day do you put in for your success? Oh, LaVar, I want to write a book. Okay, that's great. How many pages have you written this week on the book? How many lines, how many paragraphs today have you written for the book? Okay. Oh, LeVar, I want to lose 15 to 20 pounds. Okay, that's great. Have you been working out at all? Have you adjusted your diet? Have you put yourself in a surrounding of people that don't eat as bad as you currently do? There's a lot of different factors, but you have to consistently put forth an effort towards your goals every single day. And like I said, the go do for this slide, consistency level on your pillars for the foundation of success. How much time are you currently? And be honest, how much time per day do you currently contribute to, toward your success? Next, belief in self. So as I said earlier about belief in self, <laughs> this is the driving force behind the why. The why and the belief in self, they, they mirror each other. Anytime you doubt anything about what you're doing towards your success, you got to take a look at that why. And that why is going to take a look at you. And it's going to say, you, you promised me that you were going to get this done. That belief in self is when you see some of these people and we, you know, we'll label them as so successful in society. When you look at so many of these stories, guys, and I, and I have spoken to many people who have this giant level of success. I've spoken to many business millionaires, professional athletes, uh, startup companies, uh, uh, CEOs who have made it. I, I've spoken to people and researched for a long time. What are some of the common denominators and what are some of the differentiating factors with these people that are achieving higher levels of success and then compare that success to people that may not be of the same level, but they're still successful? Because remember, success is just achieving the intended goal. That's it. Success is achieving the intended goal. We can't get wrapped up in, oh, my goodness. I didn't, I didn't, my company doesn't make, you know, $10 million a year. Okay. We can't get wrapped up in, oh, I didn't lose, you know, a hundred pounds. Maybe that's where you want to go, but let's start at five pounds first. When it comes to success and belief in yourself, you got to stay whole. You've got to stay with you and the person in the mirror and you can't keep looking out and comparing and wondering. No, it's belief in what I can do. Belief in myself. And knowing that my why is my motivating factor, that's going to push me. So if we look at the go-do for belief in self, this is what I want you to do. And you're going to think, oh, LeVar, this is, uh, this, I don't, this is weird. I, don't, I, don't do, I look in my mirror to get dressed. Okay, that's cool. So when you look in your mirror to get dressed in the morning or before you go to bed tonight, whatever the case may be, I want you to tell yourself your goal. Look yourself in the mirror and say, hey, I, I'm, I, want, to start, I want to start my lawn care business. Um, I, I want to start my nail salon. 
I want to start my, my barbershop, my beauty shop. Uh, I want to start my bakery, my studio, whatever the whatever it is that you want to do. I want to lose the five or 10 pounds. You know, and let me take it a step back. I want to be a better parent. How about that? I, what, what, I just want to be a better parent. I know we have some actual college students on the line today. And, and, and so some of you may be saying, I just want to do better in school. I just want to do better in school. So that's great. So let's, I'm sorry, guys. So let's go back here. So again, look in the mirror and tell yourself your goal. Now, now, when you look at yourself in the mirror and tell yourself that goal, what is your gut reaction? Again, self-assess. Be honest with that. What is your gut reaction when you tell yourself that goal? I'm going to tell you, some of you are going to have some hesitancy. Some of you are going to have a little bit of, yeah, I want to start this company. Yeah, I'm trying to lose this weight. Yeah, I'm trying to do whatever the success is that I want to do. But you're not so sure about it yourself. The faith about it still is kind of, ah, I'm not I'm not sure. I want to do it, LaVar. I, I know I want to do this. But even when I say it out loud and put it in the air, the, the reaction from the universe back to me still isn't one of just sheer confidence. Now, let me tell you how that belief in self does the, the hesitancy can become eliminated and the belief in self will become like a, your own cheering section. How does that happen? Stay consistent. Stay consistent. When I look at the common denominators amongst all levels, any people of success, even in my own life, the more consistent I stay, the stronger my belief in self, the stronger my belief in self, I tell you, the greater the chances that I will achieve whatever success I'm trying to go after. All right, gang. So you guys saw a little sneak peek. I was uh, getting a little ahead of myself. So smart goal. I talked about at the beginning of the presentation, but one of the objectives we're going to have for today is, is touching a little bit on smart goal. Um, I, again, many of you may have seen smart goals in the business world or outside, but smart goal is nothing, uh, nothing brand new in the model in the model of success. Of course, I'm going to tweak it a little bit, obviously, right? Because we got to make it we got to make it doer style, right? We got to have actions behind what we do. So I'm going to connect kind of smart goals to our to our actions of success when we get to that in a little bit later. Um, as you see, uh, what SMART stands for, S being specific, M being measurable, A achievable, R realistic, and T time bound. Now, it depends on which model that you look at. You may see these words switched around sometimes in some other models. Achievable could be attainable, uh, realistic, relevant. I've seen some other, other acron acronyms, the way they spell it out. But uh, for the sake of the presentation, we're going to stick to SMART goal with this way. So let's spill out. Let's spill out specific. Let's spill out specific first, okay? State exactly what you want to accomplish. I mean, specific's pretty, pretty frightening face. I mean, it's what it is. Like, let's just be specific. But when it comes to achieving your goals, what I've noticed is this is where the biggest hangup happens. Most people cannot tell you precisely what the goal is. It's got a whole bunch of spokes coming off of it and a whole bunch of layers that it becomes confusing. And when you seek after to achieve the goal, you're going in a million and one different directions. So the questions you have to ask yourself around having a specific, which is in line with having a smart goal, is, is your goal transparent? Is it clear? Can you clearly answer what is the goal and what is it that you want to accomplish? If I walked up to you today and said, hey, met you in the street. Someone who's on the call right now. And I said, hey, so so what's uh what's your goal? If I get a bunch of um uh well, what I would like to at no, the direction's all over the place. <laughs> your goal needs to be very, very specific. And what happens is when it's specific, that keeps you in your lane in a tight lane, so you're not influenced by so many different factors that can throw you off uh, getting yourself to the end game in a quicker fashion. Secondly, is there room for questioning when someone asks you about your goal? And is your goal tightly defined? So when someone asks me, I'll just take the uh, a gentleman I know who I've worked with and I've coached who's starting a, a, a lawn care service. When we first got started, I said, John, so tell me what you want to do. He was like, um, I want to do I want to do a lawn care business. Uh, you know, I just want to want to manicure lawns and stuff like that. I mean, I, I've, I I like working out in the yard. It's what you know, it's kind of a passion for me. I like to like to see when it's all done and kind of step back and look at my work. I said, OK, well, I had about five questions after that. Do you want to do residential? Do you want to do uh, commercial? 
Um, will you be doing um, uh, all landscaping? Uh, will you be siding, siding grass, residing grass? Uh, will you lay flowers? Do you cut hedges? Uh, like I, I need to know everything, right? So when we finally worked through being very specific as to what this goal was, it was awesome. It's kind of the light went off. It's now that John wants to now have a lawn care service that provides services for residential areas in the North Charleston, South Carolina area. That, that, that's, that's clear to me. I get that. North Charleston, uh, residential uh, lawn care. I got that. That's boom. Now, here's the hook, guys. Here, here's where also things can get a little tricky when you do specific around your goal. Sometimes people want to add a lot of different bullet points to the one specific thing that they're trying to do. Like you heard me say there with, in the example with John, it's a uh, North Charleston area and it's lawn care. Good enough. If John wanted to eventually go after working with commercial uh, businesses in lawn care or landscaping, we're, we're, we're going to set up a whole nother smart goal in that area. Because that requires a different tracking system, different relevancy, different time situation. We're going to set a whole different uh, goal for that. So don't make sure that you're not including uh, several bullet points into being specific on one goal. And so that's your go do for this slide. Assess your goal and make sure it is specific. That's all on you while you're by yourself this evening. Look at your goal. Write it down. Is it clear? And ask yourself, uh, is there room for questions outside of that? All right, guys, measurable. So how you demonstrate, assess, and evaluate growth towards your goal. The, <laughs> the reason why I love this one because it's all about accountability. It's all about accountability on this one. How are you tracking your progression and is, and is your tracking specific? It ties right back into the S, right? If you're tracking it, what are you tracking? And, and, is, and is it very specific to you trying to get to the end game, trying to get to the goal? Aside from that, the next step is, are you making adjustments based off your tracking? I know plenty of people, they look and assess their goals all the time. But I tell you this, when it comes down to tracking it and getting to and, and making adjustments based off of it, that's not something that everybody's comfortable with doing because you're almost kind of telling on yourself and you're and you're making an assessment uh, um, on, on your own judgment to the consistency and willpower and work ethic that you're putting towards your goal. But I will tell you this, if you don't measure it, you have no idea where it's going to grow. And I think we all know the quote, where you focus is where it will grow. You won't know what to focus on if you don't measure it. All right. So your go do for this slide is what are the tangible ways you are measuring your goals? If it's something with business, are you keeping some kind of money tracker, expense tracker? Um, if it's if it's a weight loss goal, um, how consistently are we are we weighing ourselves? Um, what, what are we tracking our food? We have a food log like what tangible ways are you tracking and measuring and measuring your goals? OK. All right. All right, guys, so we're going to move into our the doer actions of success. OK, the doer actions of success. Like I told you before, I know we've all heard the, you know, the, the laws of success and the 48 laws of power. And I, I've read all the books and done all the research and, and they are appropriate and, and sure fit uh, when necessary. But I wanted to to tweak something here when it comes to the way we look at being a doer and look at how we take actions towards our success. So. If we look at taking our first step here, we got a little guy going up the steps, taking a little jog. Act one. The first action of success is the act of vision. And we're gonna we're gonna expand on that one a little bit later. The act of vision. That's step one. All right, so we get up here. We're gonna go to act two. Got my man jogging up the stairs. Pretty cool, huh? Uh the act of now. I know you guys can probably dig into that one a little bit, but the act of now, when we talk about taking action towards our dreams and goals, the act of now, and I can't wait to dig into act of now a little deeper during session two, but act of now. All right, let's keep on going. Got my little man up the stairs here. We're going to go to third step and we're at the act of consistency. We touched on a little bit, but believe me, I got a deeper level of consistency that we need to talk about. We're also going to touch on that a little bit um, in section and sorry, in session two and definitely even deeper in section in session three. So the act of consistency. 
All right, we get up here. Boom, the act four. The act of fight versus flight. Fight versus flight. I know you all have heard that. Fight versus flight. But what does that really mean? I tell you that when we talk about taking an action versus fight versus flight, when one can master this circumstance right here, success is truly in the palm of your hands, truly in the palm of your hands. And then our last step on the doer action of success. Here we go. There you go. You made it to the top, buddy. Good job. Act five, the act of completion. Yeah. There's a way to finish. <laughs> There's a way to finish. I'm going to tell you like an old coach told me. You can run to the finish line or through the finish line. It's all a mindset. It's all a mindset, guys. To the finish line or through the finish line. It's all a mindset. All right, so let's dig into the first act here. The first, the first action, the first action of success, the first doer action of success, the act of vision. So first one. And I put this, I put this, I put this in black to stand out just a little bit because I want it to be a personal challenge to you. Am I willing to accept the challenge? Am I willing to accept the challenge? Most of your goals, or not all of your goals and dreams, start off with a thought, a vision. You know, you, you hear something, a little voice come in your ear, you see something come across your face, whatever the case may be, it all started with a vision. Whatever you wanted to achieve and do started with the vision. But here's the thing. A lot of people don't answer the calling. They don't answer the success that's intended for them. Instead, they will do other things and make themselves believe that that's what they're supposed to do. And here's the hook. They actually may achieve success in the other thing, but won't be satisfied because they're not answering the challenge in the vision to what they're supposed to be doing. Do you know how many people go to work and you could be one of them every single day sitting there knowing that there is something greater and bigger inside of you? You know it, but you're going to work, you're doing your job, and yeah, I understand. Let's just be common sense, right? We got to work, we have to work, but no one says because of where you are now, you got to stay there. That's That's what I'm getting to. If you've got the vision to do something bigger and greater in your life, if there's a goal that you want to achieve, don't just say, hey, shrug your shoulders. Maybe it's not for me. You've got people telling you right now, oh, my goodness, you're good at this. You should try this. You should do this. Listen to them. Listen to them. The universe is trying to tell you in so many different ways. Some of you are going to events and seeing people on stages and, and giving presentations, and you're like, I'm better than that. I can do that. That's what happened to me, guys. I'll be honest with you. That's what happened to me. I got called to do this when I was about 12 years old. But until I truly accepted the vision to go after what I really wanted to do, it took a long time for me to accept that challenge, to, to act on that vision. But when I did, oh, baby, it's amazing what happens when you answer the bell call for your vision and stay in your lane, guys. OK, is my vision big enough now? So so this is what I mean by that. You can have the vision and then some people will literally sit down and say, well, I want to kind of create this goal. This is what I want to I don't I necessarily have a vision. I want to create this goal. But you're doing it at an average safe level. The problem with society, the problem with most people is that and you, you've heard this maybe before. You set the bar too low and then you achieve it. And now you have a false sense of success. And now you're feeling yourself and you think you're doing all these great wonders, but you you played it too safe. Go big. You, you've got you've got one opportunity at this life, right? You got one opportunity. You've got one opportunity when you go back and look at your why and all the reasons why you are doing what you do to try to be successful. You've got you've got you've only got a couple shots at this opportunity doesn't just come over and over and over again. And not to mention, we're not getting any younger. Just kind of remind you guys that when I get any younger. So you need to make sure that you're going and dreaming big. Is your vision big enough? Next one. Can I see it and feel it internally? Your vision is right when it makes you feel a little different inside. Yeah. 
your vision is right when you just kind of you kind of get this grunge face on you and nobody's looking like I'm, I'm going to do this. I'm going to get this. I'm going to tell you guys, sometimes when I'm up writing speeches or or just putting some quotes together, doing any work uh, um, for, for my doer platform, there's some time I'll get up. I'll, I'll, and you, you, If you could ask my wife, it'd be great. Sometimes I'll put on a, a hoodie in the house like I'm about to go train, like I'm about to go work out because I'm so focused. And so and, it, and it's such an internal feeling for me to achieve these dreams that I take this mindset. This mindset, like nothing can stop me. So when you think about uh, the, the power of your vision, how does it feel internally? When you look at yourself in the mirror tonight, you tell yourself that go do. When you tell yourself your goal, what does that feel like? And if it's not a pure passion, confidence, I'm, I can do this, I can get this, we got to check our consistency. We got to check our consistency, how much we're putting in work towards this dream and this goal. Stubborn faith. Don't let nobody tell you you can't do it. Stubborn faith. Don't let anybody tell you you can't do it. I know a lot of people like to throw this word around. It's kind of played out. But the word hater, I think, still exists out there. And if you have those people in your circle, then you need to make you need to make some audits in your life and get rid of some certain people. I'm telling you because I've lived it. I'm telling you because I've seen it. Putting yourself in the right position to be around people who are motivating Yet honest and truthful to push you and be honest with you about your dreams, about your success. That's the groups you want to be in. That's the groups you want to be in. Joining presentations like you're on right now. Being in a, just being in an atmosphere of like-minded people who want better. Listening to the words and messages that, messages that I'm giving you tonight. That's a step in the right direction. Stubborn faith. But it can't stop here. It's got to be consistent. There's plenty of motivational speakers and, and motivational and personal development uh, resources throughout throughout the Internet and everywhere. You have to go invest yourself in those arenas if you're truly trying to change a situation and kind of stay in the right arena, stay in the right zone. Listen, this success thing isn't easy. I mean, whoever said it was lied to you. And if you look at somebody and think, oh, my goodness, that, that, that came pretty fast and pretty easy for them. Maybe that was their story. But best believe it, that won't be their story every time. That, that, that's just we know that for a fact. You've had some things slip up on you a couple of times in life. You're like, man, that was pretty good. Man, I'm, yeah, that was some people call it luck. Some people call it favor. Some people call it just a good blessing, whatever you want to call it. But at the end of the day, you have to keep that stubborn faith and remain patient to know that you can achieve your dreams and your goals. Guys, I think we're coming up against the time here. We're about a couple minutes over. Move to this next slide. I want to thank you all so much, so much for completing uh, the first session of Momentum Coaching Series. I want to congratulate you all and thank you for joining. So so let's look at what's what's next. So I say tonight, let's, there's no need to waste any time. Let's get started. Assess where you are currently with your goal. You need to sit down. You need to look in the mirror. You need to write this down. Assess where you are currently with your goal and be honest with yourself. You've got to be honest with yourself when it comes to these dreams and these successes. Where are you currently? Complete your go-dos for tonight. Look in the mirror. Be specific. All the go-dos that we talked about. Complete your go-dos and do them tonight. Last but not least, remain patient. I'm telling you. People will look at success and they'll look at other people. They'll look at some stories that they've read, heard, seen, whatever, and they give in and give up too quickly. When I look at all the research I've done over the years, all the interviews, all the people that I've watched in this whole success thing, it's the patient piece, man. Remain patient. Stay in there. Hang in there. When you feel like you can't take any more, usually the breakthrough, usually the breakthrough is honestly about to happen around that time, guys. <laughs> I'm telling you. All right, so let's move on. So next, what we got going on next is this was session one, as you know, and I want to congratulate you all, all for joining, all for joining today. And I hope you learned something and got something out of this. Session two is coming up on December the 4th. We'll expand more on our SMART goals and our actions of success and, and, and kind of dig a little bit deeper into the, into the doer mindset. Session three is going to be the week after on December the 11th. Now, both sessions currently, <clears throat> they're $150. And that means you'll complete the whole mini series of the Momentum Success Coaching Series. But, 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 because you guys joined today, took that step, 
and are serious about achieving your dreams, achieving your goals, and having a better year than last year, I mean, keep increasing from last year. And let me let me take a step back. This whole momentum thing, the reason why we're starting it now is because the majority of people are going to start their goals when? In January. And the majority of people are going to quit their goals when? In March. The numbers don't lie. The facts are the truth. March is National Quitters Month. I'm telling you, people will start in January. It starts getting cold. The, the, the momentum, the mindset changes, all those gym visits slow down, all this grinding and hustle, staying up late to try to achieve your success, it dwindles down. And by March, they're out and they're already talking about 2018 and it's only the March of 2017. But for those who get started early and are serious about their success, I mean serious, you start now, you're going to be in the March looking at how far you've already got. And then when you look at that, you'll be motivated to keep going for the rest of the year. And then by the end of near the end of uh, 2017, in October, you are already going to be starting on planning your goals for 2018. But it has to get started. If, if you follow me on social media, I, I gave I did a speech recently on the standing, the standing bride jump versus the long jump. If you stand in one place, just swing your arms and jump. Obviously, you're not going to get as far as somebody's doing a long jump. They're running down that track. They're gaining, what's the word? Momentum. And they're taking off into the air and gaining further distances. That's what you're doing by joining tonight's class and hopefully signing up for the for the uh, remaining two sessions for this series. I'll be doing coaching guys all year long with some other crafted um, series that'll, that'll come throughout the year. And also, in addition, I do have my private coaching sessions. But I, I kind of cut myself off, didn't I? It was 150 for both sessions, but because you guys sign up tonight, if you sign up tonight, I'm sorry, if you sign up tonight, both sessions will be a total of $425. And the 